2020, the year that Americans finally realized that truck drivers and grocery store clerks are more important than Hollywood actors. Let's see what's in the news today. I see the, the mainstream media are howling mad that President Trump is calling the virus the Chinese virus. They're, now they're using the tired old racism line that Americans are so tired of hearing. Think about this. You know how race car drivers wear jackets with patches all over them so that you can see who sponsors them? We should do the same with the media. You want to know who owns them? Listen to who they defend and watch who they attack with their usual propaganda. CNN, MSNBC, and the entire Democrat Party should be wearing jackets adorned with the communist Chinese patches. They should also wear the Mexican drug cartel patches, Planned Parenthood patches, Sodom and Gomorrah patches, and in my humble but correct opinion, the Church of Satan patches. That way the American people will know who owns them. <laughs> Sibeli Capizuti asks, is there a tax we can pay to stop the coronavirus or does that only work with climate change? <laughs> she does know how to make her point, doesn't she? <clears throat> Harvey Weinstein has contracted the Chinese virus in prison. Well, considering all of his playtime with Hollywood starlets, this probably isn't the first time he's caught something. The Catholic Church has announced that they will be forgiving the sins of people who are struck with the communist Chinese virus. Yes, that name is going to stick. Well, isn't that magnanimous of the Catholic Church? Why haven't they just done that for everybody? Well, for one thing, there is no church or priest on earth who has the authority to forgive sins. Don't you people ever read your Bibles? The office of priest was done away with over 2,000 years ago, and today's priests have no authority. That belongs strictly to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, the Catholic Church says that one of the conditions for them granting forgiveness is that the person must read their Bible for 30 minutes. Well, you know, people who have been saved through faith in Jesus Christ tend to do that anyway. Is reading the Bible for 30 minutes a first for Catholics? Well, these are pointing people in one good direction. Well, maybe they should start with this verse, 1 Timothy 2.5. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Did you get that? One mediator, Christ Jesus, no church, no priests. Okay, now that I've hacked off the entire Catholic Church with a truth bomb, <laughs> let's do the same to the LGBT people. <clears throat> The Texas Commission on Judicial Conduct is being sued for threatening judges who refuse to perform same-sex marriages because of their Christian faith. Now, this is a very important pushback against the immorality that has been forced on our most important institutions. The militant LGBT agendas are the greatest threat to Christianity in America today, and men and women of faith must stand strong upon the scriptures of God and declare, like the apostles in Acts 5.29, when they were hauled before the court because of their Christian faith, they said to the court, quote, we must obey God rather than men. Christian judges should do the same thing to their state authorities. The two terrible national sins of the United States is government-sponsored abortion and government-sponsored sexual immorality. And it's more than just government-sponsored. These things are being forced upon all of us by the government in direct violation to the commandments of God. Like the first century apostles, we the people must also declare that we must obey God rather than men. <laughs> Some of the militant imams of the religion of peace are angrily declaring that the Muslim world will refuse any vaccine that comes from the USA or Israel. <laughs> well, that ought to solve a few problems since the first vaccines are pretty much guaranteed to spring forth from either the USA or Israel. <coughs> oh man, I coughed. That means I have to get six feet away from myself. 
Yes, I stand with Israel because God stands with Israel. And I have to get that in there for all the people who like to send me death threats whenever I say something nice about Israel. The Democrat Party, true to form, is calling for the most massive voter fraud yet because of the Chinese virus. They are demanding voting by mail for everybody. That means that there will be no voter ID at all. Gee, what could possibly go wrong there? Destroying free and fair elections in the USA has been a priority of the left for a long time now, and we must never drop our guard because if the Democrats ever get to the point where they have no more fear of the ballot box, they would quickly turn this nation into a totalitarian nightmare of liberal domination. It looks like non-essential medical procedures are being shut down until the Chinese virus is under control. And guess who is included in that? Planned Parenthood. And of course, the bloodlust crowd is shrieking like banshees because their abortions have come to a halt. They are hopping mad that, uh, quote, coronavirus is being used to end abortion. You know, it just occurred to me that if the virus shuts down Planned Parenthood for two weeks, it will have saved more lives than it has taken. Think about that. Why are the pro-abortion people so enraged? Well, my best guess is it's because their blood sacrifices to Satan are being delayed. All right, let's see what's happening in education. Liberal college professors are expressing fear that because they are being forced to give their lectures online, that right-wing sites might get them. Yes, they do not want the American people to know what kind of nonsense they teach our children behind closed doors in their classrooms. Making them do their lectures online just might bring some much-needed accountability to college classes. And here's one to make your blood boil. Lucas Gerhardt is an Eagle Scout, a Second Amendment supporter, and a student at Lake Superior State University in Michigan. Lucas bought himself an AR-15, which the university allows students to have on campus as long as the rifle is checked into the school armory. But Lucas made a little joke online where he said that his purchase will, quote, make the snowflakes melt. And guess what happened when he went back to school? He was arrested and charged with felony terrorism. Ugh. This poor kid is now facing the possibility of 20 years in prison, and he wanted to be a police officer. So much for that. You know, I want to know the names of the law enforcement officers who would make such an idiotic arrest. They have truly disgraced the badge. Seriously, get me the names of those officers and I will do a video specifically calling them out by name. <sighs> the American people need to rally around Lucas Gerhardt and send this flaming liberal anti-constitution college a strong message and a message to those police officers too. This kind of outrageous behavior by school officials and dirty cops is intended to terrorize Americans into even being afraid to speak. Okay, are there any villains that I have not angered today? Yeah, I almost forgot one. Hillary Clinton is still not president. Ugh, feels good to end on a positive note. This is Wild Bill for America, and this has been Coffee with Bill. Thanks for watching, and America, bless God again.